good morning. Welcome back. We are in Exodus chapter 20, and today we are at verse 13. There's only a couple of words here. It's a very short sentence in the Hebrew language. In the English language, it's short. Now, I have the New American Standard 1995 version here, and it says, You shall not murder. An older translation, the King James Version and several of the older translations, say, You shall not kill. Which is it? Well, if you go and you look at all the modern translations, virtually all of the modern translations, and this is one of sort of the modern translations, you have this murder instead of kill. And there's arguments made both ways about this commandment that it really should read more like murder or it really should read more like kill. You shall not kill. And I'm not going to take the case in a four-minute video here uh, to build a case really one way or the other, but I will tell you what I believe and I think that by far the most biblical approach to this is the one that we find actually in the older versions. You shall not kill is the broader usage here. And what's interesting is that most of these modern translations have come up in a time when uh, the churches are bending to the state and the state wants to, at least, uh, at least my nation, the United States of America, uh, seems to want to have wars on all the time. And so they're in every different country having a war at any given point in time, uh, having wars, fighting wars, fighting. So there's always this tendency to justify, we're going to send people to whatever a stand and have them go over there and fight and, and, and die and be killed and kill others. And we got to make sure we justify that. So people get this idea, well, it's okay, it's it, this isn't out ruling out war, this is ruling out murder. Well, there's a word here, ratzach, and this word occurs 47 times in the Bible, and it's associated actually with both kinds of killing. Premeditated, murder kind of killing. But what's interesting is that all these talk in Leviticus and so on where it talks about the cities of refuge for the manslayer, for the person who accidentally kills somebody, they use the word there in all those places too. So this is a word that we would use for manslaughter today if we were translating it in English. So this is kill, kill, generic kill. This isn't kill, sometimes in the context, it's kill in terms of murder. So, but this covers both pieces. And so if we say, you shall not kill, that, to me, says it more truly represents the commandment as we find it in the Bible than you shall not murder, which is a more specific case. See, and now you see what you think of this. I believe we should abstain from all acts of injustice that tend to shorten life or make life harder and more brutal. Don't you? Don't you think that Jesus would have us live that way? I believe that we should be very careful not to uh, indulge in acts that might somehow be injurious to others. Uh, don't you? Don't you think that's the way of Jesus? I'm trying to interpret this commandment as Jesus would interpret it. Jesus talked about visiting people in need in the prison or at the people who were ill or sick. And he says, if you've done this to them, if you've visited them in their need, you've done it to me. So Jesus emphasized caring for the needy, helping those uh, who are locked away unjustly in prison. Care for them. Go visit them. See how it works here? So I'm taking that kind of a, an approach to it. I'm trying to understand this commandment as Jesus would have us understand it. Anything, anything and everything that would lead to or that would be injurious to health is, is actually impinging on this commandment of killing. If you make a product or if you sell a product that you know is dangerous, you sell a product that you know is going to cause people to uh, have their health injured or even to die. Uh, if that's the case, you are in some measure breaking this commandment. You shall not kill. Don't try to put it over there and say, oh, this is only just about the, just put it in a little box, the word murder. It's just about murder. That's all it is. And I'm not murdering anybody. They're making their own choices. They come into the store. They bought the crazy stuff. They bought the, the sweets and make them, make them diabetic. They bought the foods that give them cancer. They bought the, the, all these weird preservatives and things that drive them in wild places. It's their choice. It may be their choice, but it's also your choice whether you participate in selling it. So uh, anything that's injurious to life, that's a problem here. You shall not kill. That is the point. Now, you may say, well, God's in the end, God's going to kill all these people at the second coming of Jesus, right? Well, he's God and you're not. So you don't have to make that choice. Your choice is you shall not kill. God has made this as an, a universal command for us 
And so his plan for us is that we would not participate really in any way, shape or form in killing, in abortions or any kind of killing. These things are contra to God's Ten Commandment law, the word from heaven on this commandment, you shall not kill. And think about it that way and see if it isn't better to think of it in the broader terms, because after all, Ratzach has that meaning encompassing both deliberate acts of killing, which would be murder, but it also encompasses not so deliberate acts of killing, acts that were not so intentional. And so with that in mind, it sort of brings this commandment up in a spiritual place. Oh, friends, if we want to be more like Jesus, then instead of trying to cut off somebody's head like Peter did, Jesus took the ear that he cut off in the Garden of Gethsemane and Jesus reattached it. That was not killing. That was restoration. Friends, we can be like Jesus in this way. All right, tomorrow morning we'll go on to number seven. You might be surprised about the seventh commandment. See you then.